Today is the 8th of June, 2009. My name is Carl Ross of the University of Portsmouth in the Department of Mechanical and Design and Engineering in the United Kingdom. Underwater, that's the, uh, well, the doomsday prediction by some, that if Greenland melts, the ice caps melt in Greenland, uh, sea levels could rise by 21 feet. That means you and I right now will be slightly on the damp side. So what should we do? Should we build a boat? No. Let's build a floating island. This could be a vision of the future. And it's serious. Uh, Professor Carl Ross is from the Mechanical Engineering Department at the University of Portsmouth. Uh, Professor Carl joins me now. Afternoon to you, Professor. Good afternoon, dear sir. Uh, so, a floating island, the answer to the problem of rising sea levels. It's not only really rising sea, sea levels. We have to realise that in 1925, the world population was 2 billion. According to the UN, the current population in the world is 6.8 billion, and, and in 2050, we'll rise to 10.5 billion. That means in 100 years, the world population is more or less quadrupled. So we need a bit more room as well. We not only do we, the problem is that not only the population increasing, but land levels might decrease because of rising sea levels. So therefore, uh, now some 71% of the Earth's surface is covered by water. Only 29% is covered by dry land. So the obvious way is to colonize the seas. And this is why I propose um, a floating island city, also a floating island agricultural um, uh, Island, um, which could grow um, crops using hydroponics, which you discovered, which you discussed earlier today. Yeah. Now, why not just try and reclaim land? Why build giant floating islands? It's no good having to reclaim land because the reclaim land will be a few feet above above the water. So as soon as the sea levels rise, the reclaim land will be lost. Is it possible to build such a big thing that would float? Would it actually float? Oh yes, it will float because it's. Uh, it's, it's supported on giant concrete tubular pillars, which are very buoyant because the inside is, uh, it, it hasn't got any water inside it. So a bit, more, a bit like an oil rig then? Exactly like, like a uh, rather similar to the, to the troll gas drilling rig, which, uh, which is a massive rig. It's much higher than ours. The troll gas drilling rig has legs which are nearly 400 meters, whereas ours is only about 75 meters high. In other words, uh, the gap between the water level and uh, where the actual platform is, is about 50 meters. Mm -hmm. So if the sea levels rise, we will still be uh, way above uh, um, being flooded. Wow. So how big could you build an island? Could you build one, for example, the size of the Isle of Wight? Uh, well, not quite that big, but maybe the, maybe the size of Portsmouth. Right. So, that, so it's the size of a city you could build to float, everyone could live on there, and we could be quite self-sustainable on the island, you reckon? We can be quite su self-sustainable because to get, e to get energy, we could use uh, um, wave energy. Uh, there's a method which, is, which has been tested at Hasda, where they have a, uh, a giant snake-like object, which they call an anaconda. And this anaconda could, could supply a thousand homes. One single anaconda, we could also use tidal energy, where a two thousand turbine to supply a thousand homes. Uh, we could also use solar energy where we could get uh, one watt per square foot together with biomass energy. In fact we'd have enough, if it causes the island, it could be completely and totally self-sufficient for energy and it could export some of its energy to the mainland. Right. What, well there won't be much mainland left by the sounds of it. Oh there'll be, be mainland, there'll be plenty of mainland left. <laughs> We've got the mainland left. In fact, as far as Portland's concerned, that will be safe because the city fathers won't let it go underwater. It, it's quite a simple matter to build a 22-foot high wall right round Portland to prevent it from going underwater, right. just like the Dutch have done. Right. Now, um, why have you come up with this idea? This is, this is because um, there was a, is it a competition to come up with a, an idea for how to deal with climate change? Now, I've been interested in climate change for a number of years. I've been interested in in designing, a, being a conceptual designer of a floating island city for almost 15 years. But uh, only about three years ago, uh, we were able to uh, start it. And uh, I've, all, I've been concerned about it. Uh, everyone realized the population of the world is expanding. And uh, that's the main reason behind it. Even if the sea levels don't rise, yeah. if you have 
if you imagine a population quadrupling in a hundred years from now, we will still need floating island cities because we have to colonize the oceans. Right. And now, uh, f forgive me for saying this, Carl, then please, please don't take offence, but when you tell people that your idea is that we build floating islands, yeah. and that's the way that we're going to progress, and that's, that is the future, yeah. what's the normal reaction? Because some people might think that kind of this is just too crazy that you're, you're kind of one sandwich short of a full picnic here. No, it's not too crazy because they've already built floating island airports in Japan and currently there's a big project going on they're going to build a, a floating island city just off San Francisco. So they're, they're actually doing it. They realize it's important and they're doing it. And this could be... And how, how long do you see the, the, the game plan here? I mean, how many years in the well, future do you think I'll, this might happen? Yeah, I would say as far as uh, the Western world is concerned, maybe just just towards the latter part of this century. But this, but you, you don't realize that in, 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 in the Pacific Ocean and the Indian Ocean, there are a lot of uh, Paradise Island, which are only a few feet above mm. the water. And if, if the water level requires just a few feet, there would be hundreds of thousands of these people displaced. Uh, they leave somewhere to go. And uh, so therefore, I would think that as far as those people are concerned, the floating island city will, will be built even quicker. Wow. It's an amazing vision, and I'm so pleased you shared us, uh, it with us. Uh, Carl, thank you so much for your time. That's Professor Carl Ross there from the Mechanical Engineering Department at Portsmouth University with his vision of the future, floating islands. Can you ever see that happening? Do you think we'll ever get to a stage? where we need to build them. Love to hear your thoughts on that. 0845 30 30 96 one, the number to call. And if it is a floating island, could we, if it's all right, could we just moor it up against the Isle of Wight just for now until we decide what we do with it?